What is up? My name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database, and we're going to be continuing our series on getting started with Cine Designer for the new people and for people that uh, are upgrading from R2 to R3. There's a little bit of difference. So in the last video, we looked at using the spotlight. I think the spotlights are really good for physical. There's really not much I can need to update with them. I just need to make more models. That's what we'll be doing. And in this video, I'm going to delete this. We're going to be working with our volume lights. So we're going to be working with our space lights. I'll bring in a 2K space light, put it up in the air. And then also we will be working with our Kino flow, which is a very lovely Kino flow. It took me a long time to redesign this to work correctly. We'll bring in a stand. So um, let's see, what are we going to do here? So let's look at the Kino flow first. So I'm going to put this together. So stand and then light, and I'm going to call this key light like that. And I'm going to make this our key light for our talent here. So I know the Kino flow, actually, I mean, depending on where you are in the world and your career, these Kino flows were life for like a long time. They were low power, very soft, lightweight, relatively, and they still are those things, but they've kind of started to be supplanted by LEDs and even KinoFlow now makes KinoFlow Select. So we don't see these as much, but you know, they're still in the rental world and they're still out there. So I, I can't say that. But um, when I first started making Cine Designer, uh, they were still like out there in force. So let's see, what are we going to do here? So I'm eventually going to separate this out a little bit. I've started to do this in Redshift, but for now, everything's just lumped together. Now it's kind of overwhelming. I'm going to start to separate them out very soon. But we have our adapter pan, which I'll just zoom up on this real quick. That's gonna spin this. I call this the adapter. And I realize there's other ways of mounting Kino flows, but that's the way that I just have it defaulted. So it spins the whole rig. And then we have this interesting ball joint and that's these controls. So that pans it on the ball joint, tilts it on the ball joint, and then this is how you go vertical with it. If you wanna do vertical, vertical stuff. So I'm gonna reset this to zero. And that's the control for the Kino flow. Pretty happy with that actually. I like. How that works, I'm gonna tilt it back down. So, can I gonna get in here and I refocus the adapter? Pretty good, pretty good. So the new Keto Flow, I think should now show up in the viewport. Still says it requires GI. That's interesting, I thought, well the Redshift ones don't, but these ones do. Really, are they area lights? Okay, anyway, I'm forgetting my own design. I make a lot of lights these days, sorry. So now you could actually turn on the bulbs one by one for as valuable as that is. Um, the viewport does take a second to catch up. So they're, so they're all on now. And the brightness is controlled here globally. So they all have the same brightness, which I realize in real Kino flows you can change the bulbs individually, but for this implementation, I decided not to do that for simplicity. Um, because the, the value of, of implementing that for physical is not that big. I think for Redshift, I actually made them individually addressable for um, brightness. But let's give this a render here. And so let's double check this. I'm pretty, it says it needs GI, so it probably does. I'm turning off GI, so we're just using physical. I'm gonna turn this back down to like preview quality. And let's take a peek at what this looks like. It's probably black because it says it needs GI and yeah, so the default light is on, but these still glow. Okay, so they're still emissive, but this, you, so you basically need to have GI on to use the space lights. That's the moral of this story. I know that confuses a lot of people, but um, at least now they show up in the viewport as a light. That's, that's kind of new. So let's check out if we turn back on uh, global illumination, how these are looking. I'm gonna render again, GI is on. And now they should actually be emitting light and the default light will be off. There we go. So it's light mapping the light. That looks really nice so far. It looks very accurate. Okay, that looks pretty good. So here's the thing about these Kino flows. They're now, I mean, they've always been, but they are very physically accurate in that each one of them is a tube light emitting light, you know, in the way that it does. And a lot of it is going behind it into the reflector and kind of bouncing out it's not the best. The issue with these lights uh, in Cine Designer, because they're accurate, is that there's four light sources now. Instead of one, like if you're using a sky panel, it's just one light source. In this case, it's four. So in theory, it kind of takes four times as long, sort of, sort of, to, to render with these. Um, 
And as well, because they're small light sources, this is getting into render theory, which we haven't gotten into yet, but because they're small light sources and they're emitting light in that way from a small aperture, it, it lends itself to being more noisy, okay? Um, that's not like the perfect explanation, but in general, these Kino flows are accurate, but they are longer to render because there's four lights, and two, they can be a little bit noisier and grainier because of the light sources are very small and it's kind of limiting how the samples get distributed around the scene. That being said, they're very soft and they look great. And if you're using these and you want to illustrate to your gaffer and director and whoever that you're using them, they work perfectly for that. So very cool. They're just a little slow, a little grainy, which is not great, but they look good. Uh, what else is in here? So uh, I kind of redesigned them. So you have to use a four bank. You can't dynamically change how many lights there are, but you can change its size. So that's pretty dope. Couldn't do that before, I don't believe. I think this is actually more helpful to be able to do that. So now we can make it like this. Kind of level that out. And this is something that if you've ever worked in uh, like chroma key situations, this is very common to do this. I'm gonna spin the stands around. Oh, nope, not that. Um, oh, you can't spin the legs on the baby, what? I thought I could spin the legs on these. That's an oversight. I need to fix that. I, I designed these so that you could spin the legs usually just to make it like visually a little bit nicer. So we have to do this, whatever. Um, so this is very common for chroma, to light chroma key screens or to light full body shots of people because they're taller than people. And this is a really nice way of doing that. So let's focus this on them. Adapter pan. So you can go and change the color of these lights individually, which is interesting. Um, but I'll just let you guys go try that out. So let's see how this feels. It's pretty cool. I like being able to put an eight foot, uh, I think these are called mega banks when they're eight feet long, a four, to, a four bank, a four tube mega bank here. That's pretty fun. And again, renders kind of slowly um, because there's four lights in there. It's not just one, but that's gonna render just fine. So I'm gonna stop that. So let's look at our space lights now. I'm gonna turn off our Kino flows, which you have to literally turn off every bulb. It's kind of a, <laughs> for better or for worse with that. So let's look at our space light. Is our space light GI dependent? I know I should know this because I made them, but I make a lot of things. It does, it requires GI. So we'll just take its word for that. But what's new is that it shows up in the viewport. So you actually can see interactively in real time how this is looking. So that's nice and that's new. R2 users, almost a good enough reason to upgrade is the viewport space lights if you're using physical. So that works. And you cannot do this. You can't do this with these lights, unfortunately. I know that's really helpful to be able to do that. You can't. With physical, I mean, with redshift, you can. With physical, you cannot do that. So you, you actually have to bring in another space light if you want this to work correctly. So that's just a limitation of the system. Um, I'm aware that that's not that cool. I wish that it, I wish that you could do that, but you can't. So two spacelets like this, pretty common. I think this would be a good setup if you're okay hitting the walls. I mean, it depends on how you light, but this is something that I would consider doing. So there's our two space lights with a nice little preview. And let's check out a quick render here. They're both at 200% and we're gonna render. See how this feels. When it says preparing displacement, that's based on the set. I have displacement for the floor and the walls so that they show up as like little, they have little lines in them. You may not have to do that depending on your set. So this has a similar issue to the Kino flows in that they're pure GI lights and pure GI lights kind of mean they're a little noisy. They're not as, I think they don't, they don't render as quickly and as good as just regular area lights and regular vol and reg yeah, basically regular area lights or spotlights. They're a little bit slower, a little more intensive to calculate, but they are very accurate. So we're getting very nice, like non shadows here because of the way we set them up. We do have a shadow there, but acting very space light E. So that's good. Very nice. And the new R3 space lights show up in the viewport. So that's also very helpful. I think there's a viewport limit though. If you put like eight lights in it, they start turning each other off. So you can only put eight in there. And if, I mean, to me, I end up working like this anyway, cause they get distracting, but for initial placement, they do work like that. So let's turn, where's our other space lights? So we have our two space lights here and let's work with just one of them for now, just this one. 
So we have some controls on there. We have the brightness and the color. That all works the way you think it would. And we have a half skirt, so that's kind of new. And if we turn on the half skirt, it does it show it in the viewport if I turn on shadows? Shadows is just not usually worth it, but turn on shadows. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look very good, so don't don't do that. <laughs> Shadow viewport, viewport shadows just never look right. But in the GI, this will cut it off of the background. Take a peek at that. Look at this for a second. Let it render up. So this should be cutting the light off of the background a little bit. Looks like it is. A lot of it's still making it there, but um, this has taken light off of the background. And I actually made a new redshift space light, which I'll eventually show you when we're getting into the redshift stuff, but right now we have these. And they work pretty well. They're the dimensions of a Mole Richardson 2K space light, and uh, those are still in play quite a bit. What else? We have a full skirt now, so if I full skirt this, it should um, basically, you know, put the light straight down so I can put this right over her, like this. Roughly throw that in there. So this should do an okay job of keeping it off the wall. It's kind of a short skirt. I didn't make it so you could change the distance of the skirt. Um, redshift you can, but not for physical. So this is looking great, actually. People use this a lot for top light. So this is gonna moderately keep it off of the back wall and just mostly direct it straight down. I'm not even gonna let this render, but nice little preview of what that's gonna look like eventually. What else? I think that's about it. So that is the Kino Flow and the space light objects. They're a little bit different. They require GI and because they are GI only lights, they're kind of slow, unfortunately, but they still work really well if you're trying to visualize this kind of stuff. Let's turn our Kino Flow back on. Turn on two tubes, why not? And let that catch up, pretty cool. So I'm gonna let this render for our final intro here. And so that's how these work. You have to turn on GI and be a little bit prepared for a slightly longer render times. Let this render here. So let's see, what are we gonna do next? I know I should, I don't know if this is like, should be recorded on camera, but I've been doing it. We've covered spotlights. I think we looked at the area lights. The breezy is the same. Um, frame lights, have we looked at frame lights? I don't remember. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. And I think in the next one, I'll do some, I'll do, I'll do one on just building stuff. Cause I think that's important and people may not be aware of how that works. So next episode, we will do some different configurations and really take advantage of how the Cine Designer plugin itself actually works. Cause we've been using a lot of very simple things. I'll, I'll break it down in a little bit more um, comprehensive way. So yeah, so this is a technically three lights now, all GI based, so no direct lighting, unfortunately. Little noisy. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, give it a little bit more samples, but you will eventually get there. And this looks, this will look good eventually, the longer you let this sit here. And it looks very Kino Flow and Space Lighty, so I like this. So next episode, we're gonna do some building. See you then.